Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Pop Full Mail. We're rapidly approaching the finale here, but in the meantime we have a couple of things we need to see about. Such as, oh, uh, I don't know, taking care of this hermit crab who really posed no threat, but believed he did and he paid the price, so pay up. And we want to take the right path because the right path is usually the right path, get it? And yeah, nothing over here, we're just gonna ascend these stairs and how's everybody doing out there I'm just chillaxing over here just kicking back cooling out not a care in the world and ooh, a couple of guys we know slick and glug what in the world are you doing here well, since you never came back I had to wait for these penguins to come along and rescue me which by the way was quite humiliating then I ran into Glug here, who talked me into following him to this gigantic goosebump generator disguised as a castle. Say, do you want to come with us? We're going to see my latest creation in action. Latest creation? What are you talking about? Well, you see, I was asked a while ago by a very wise man to create a golem of pure mithril. He wanted it so that a very strong spirit could inhabit it to fight against the overlord. Isn't that the coolest thing you've ever heard? Glug's name will go down in history! Wait a minute, something's fishy about this whole thing. You're crazy if you think the Underlord would allow you to bring a mithril golem into his own castle. How did you get chosen to do this in the first place? Well, I'm pretty sure it's because of my reputation as a great craftsman. The fact that I recovered enough mithril to make it didn't hurt either. But I really think that Mr. Muttonhead just liked me. He's really a nice person. Muttonhead? He's the one who broke the black seal pea brain? Huh? Well, then the golem I made is... Right. Going to be used by the Overlord himself. <laughs> you discovered my plan a little too late, my dim-witted friends! <laughs> Where are you? Show yourself! Oh no! <laughs> Not yet! The fun is about to begin! Soon the Overlord will descend into the Mithril Golem's body and the whole world will be mine! <laughs> oh no! What are we gonna do? Let's get out of here! Uh, uh, yeah, we'll be seeing you. Uh, good luck! Great! Sure, go ahead and leave when you're needed the most! Twinkies. And I don't know why she's so surprised. I mean, did she really think they were gonna do anything else? You know, especially Slick, I mean... <laughs> the world's better off with him not even involved, actually. So here we are at the top of the complex with the, the Orb Tower. Nothing catchy or literary about that. Uh, what would be the right term? A literary? A literary. <laughs> English is an interesting language, isn't it? So, oh, before I can say anything else. Ha! You can run, but you can't hide! I found you at last, Muttonhead! <laughs> you found me? <laughs> you couldn't find your shadow on a sunny day, sweetie! Just as I suspected, <laughs> you've fallen right into my trap, Mr. Cracker. Time to test your toy. <laughs> okay, boss. I'm gonna make a pancakes out of them this time. <laughs> Watch this, it's cute. That's right, Muttonhead. Run away. Again. Hey, what's the matter, you stupid? You're gonna fight me, and that's gonna be the end of your worries. <laughs> Couldn't find your shadow on a sunny day. I'm gonna have to remember that one. Hey, I'm not gonna be so easy on you kids at this time. Let's play ball. <laughs> so this should be our final fight with Nuts Cracker. This fight is actually relatively easy. It's just a little tedious because it's... A lot like the wood golem fight, if you remember that way back when. I think that was the first 
legitimate boss you have to deal with. Basically, you have to deal with this armor slash tank slash pony he's riding on before you can actually do damage to him. So the damage you do to that doesn't count towards him. Like right now, he's out and about, so that's when we can hit him. But as you can see, the window of opportunity to do that is quite small. So this is going to be a process. And Tat's weapon actually comes in handy a little bit here. You know, that pseudo homing ability that sometimes decides to reach out into outer space. But he takes too much damage, so I think Gaul is always, these days, is going to be the way to go. And I'm actually going to start using the helmets because they're there taking up space and they actually do help a little bit. You know, they keep me from doing, or they keep me from sustaining tremendous damage. But still more than I would like. In fact, I have to. I don't know if I can track down a copy for a decent price. Maybe there's a video on YouTube I can look at. But I'd like to see the Japanese version of this game in action to see how the damage compares. Because it'd be really funny if the helmet in this version just reduced the damage they did to what it was in the original version, you know, before any adjustments were made whatsoever. I think that would be quite interesting. And I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. But yes, uh, I'm always hearing about how the Japanese version was a lot more fair, or just wasn't as unbalanced as far as the amount of damage that they did, as well as the amount of damage that they were able to sustain from you. So I'd like to see how drastic of the difference there is between the two. So something I'm gonna do in my off time, I welcome you to do the same. I'm sure there's at least one full playthrough on YouTube. Of the original version of this so as you can see you know the gingerbread heads up top don't really affect the outcome one way or another they're just kind of there occasionally dropping down saying hi with a boom and a bang it's not really our thing so we're just gonna avoid them as much as possible and there he goes he's yeah gall really is the correct option when it comes to these boss fights He's already at less than half. And just gonna keep using those helmets for now because as you can see, they do make a bit of a difference. I wasn't giving them enough credit. Still don't think they're really worth it. But the thing about them is you can still attack when they're equipped unlike the amulet, so. Which of course is because if you could attack by using the amulet, you would pretty much have invincibility throughout the entire game provided you could afford to buy amulets because you would go through them just that fast, but they still make things much easier than they would be otherwise. And just gonna take a moment here and let Gaul do the rest because we're done. That went faster than I thought. Okay, we destroyed him for real, but he's still a robot, so what gives? What constitutes the real one in this case? The robot had a robot dummy, huh? <laughs> I think you're knocking something loose into my head. Uh oh, I think I'm a dead. Yeah, I don't know any humans whose heads blow up when they're detached from their body. Never mind the fact that he continued to speak, so he was definitely a robot. So, go figure. Okay, so back to business in the Tower of the Orbs. I'm going to use the dragon stone to raise that except yeah there's a little trick you have to take it out at the same time in order to get through there now I won't lie I had to do some edits because I spent a few minutes trying to remember that part figured out because I was stuck and that's what it was you can't actually advance with the dragon orb there you have to take it out very quickly and run for it you won't get crushed just just keep moving forward because you have to reuse it right there. And there you have to leave it in place, but that's fine because you don't need it anymore. So here we are in the inner sanctum and hmm. End of the line, Muttonhead. Get your sorry butt up. No, oh, I must have used up all of my magic. Oh, <laughs> now I'm fallen and I can't get up. But now that the golem is ready and the black seal is destroyed, <laughs> the overlord will be here very 
soon. <laughs> I can hardly wait. <laughs> then I'll just have to put the black seal back. <laughs> Are you deaf? <laughs> I just said that the black seal is gone. Kaput. Destroyed. <laughs> it don't work no more. <laughs> What? Back so soon? I thought you were running home to your mommies. I started thinking about how that old mutton head tricked me. And the more I thought, the madder I got. So I talked Slick into coming back with me to finish what we started. Oh, ee, ah, ah, ee, 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 ee. But how did you get through the wall? You need the dragon stone to do that. Hey, don't forget, I'm a dwarf artisan. I can craft devices out of Mithril that can do amazing things! Ouch! Why, you little... Wait a minute. I still have one question for the big shot. Okay, Muttonhead, this is your last chance. How do I seal the Overlord again? Oh, well, no... I don't know. What?! You engineered this whole mess! You must know how to seal him again! No, there isn't any way to seal him again. He's here to stay. The only way to be done with it is, is, is to destroy him. Okay, right, sure. All I have to do is destroy him. I mean, how hard can that be? He's just an all-seeing, all-knowing superhuman maniac hell-bent on crushing the life out of anything that moves. Sure, no problem. Come on, Melee. Don't wig out on us now. You're our only shot at stopping this colossal cosmic creep cake. You gotta keep it together. Don't worry, Slick. It's just a matter of finding his weakness. And I will find it. And everyone knows that all powerful maniacs have lots of treasure. If the Overlord is defeated, it will be ours to take. You guys stay here and keep an eye on the crybaby. He's a tricky little squirt. Don't take your eyes off him for a second. Now is it just me or is it every time they mention the black seal I think they're talking about an animal. I mean I know they're not talking about an animal but visually in my mind I get an image of a, a literal seal you know those cute little mammals that swim anyway. So there's four doors here four doors four orbs do you see a pattern? So we're just gonna work our way from left to right here's door number one not really sure which orb this pertains to but we are basically in the platforming stage of the game. This is platforming 101, so welcome to the fundamentals, everybody. Because of this, there's going to be a lot of high jumps, a lot of Mega Man style. Now you see him, now you don't blocks. So we're going to switch to Gaul because he's going to have the easiest time getting around, even though he's not the quickest. But when we need speed, we can switch to mail on the fly. Tat is just going to be warming up the bench for us, unfortunately. That seems to be what he's best at, so... Let's play to everybody's strengths here. And this first one's pretty easy. Yeah, just to speed things up, we're going to switch to her. Ascend the stairway, and... Voila, the yellow orb is in place. Not surprised that's the first one. So, next up is door number two. And everything's moving along just fine. Now, each path, you'll see there's a, a statue there of different characters. And I have no idea who or what those characters are referencing. So, if anybody has any idea, I would definitely welcome the information. But... You know, nice touch in the meantime, and I was not expecting to see you right there. And I did not know that they could throw bombs in those things. First time I've seen that in this playthrough at least. But, easily dispatched. More jumping, more hipping and hopping and platforming. I'm hearing the Heat Man music on my head right now. I kind of want to almost superimpose that over this. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> nope, nope, we.
we want to switch back to her and deposit I think that's the blue orb it's kind of hard to tell but we'll go with that and if I can just avoid you because I don't yeah I don't even need the gold at this point I did farm off screen like I said I would you can't tell now because it's all been spent up but bought a few more elixirs or at least one more got plenty of amulets and what will hopefully be enough healing items I try not to go overboard with it just try to get what I honestly thought I would need because really why spend the time getting an excess at this point it's not gonna get used so just trying to be as practical as possible as always that's the goal maybe not always the reality but certainly the goal so again Here we are. Three out of four so far. And the red orb, that just leaves the black orb. And we're moving along just fine here. And if I can avoid all of those traps, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Things are just moving along here. We'll be at the Overlord knocking on his front door before you know it. I can't wait, how about you? I mean, it's been a fun ride, but I can't lie. I'm sort of happy that we're approaching the end, but that has more to do with outside factors than anything here. Been having fun revisiting this, what I wish I could call a classic, but I don't think it's well known enough for that status. And those things aren't a concern at this point at all. Oh, real quick, let's see if we can recover. Ah, not quite. My timing was off. And quick edit there this will be probably my fourth or fifth try but you won't see that and through the magic of video editing and interesting little gimmick here with the directional platforms you have to turn your head into a bit of a metronome with these blocks I mean you could count it out and loud too but I don't know I like to live a little more intuitively than that and I'm sort of getting them there as you can see I get in a hurry sometimes, so it throws me off, but when I can maintain my patience, it's not too bad. That was an interesting little bit right there. Loving the background back there with the storms ongoing. Blue skies, but thunderstorms. Something to see in real life, too. It's been a while, though. And we're going to call it a day there. This has been part 20. Next time, please join me for the finale. See you soon.